In this video, I'm going to be showing you a Jupyter compatible platform that you could use for your data science projects. And without further ado, we're starting right now. So the Jupyter platform that I'm talking about is called the deepnote.com. In a nutshell, DeepNote is a new type of data science notebook that is quite similar to Google Colab in that it is a Jupyter compatible notebook and it works pretty much like Google Docs or Google Sheets in which you could collaborate with other in your data science team. By collaborating, I mean you could annotate your code or commenting directly into your code cell with your other members in the data science team. And aside from having access to a typical Jupyter notebook, you also have access to the command line whereby you could install packages that you need for your data science projects. In addition, it also provides the ability to use Docker. And the great thing about this deep note is that it's provided for free. And so you could get started without paying a single dollar. And let's go ahead and click on the try deep note for free. And so you could log in by either using your Google account or your GitHub account. Okay, and so upon logging in with your Google account, you will be seeing the following getting started notebook. And so let's have a look here. So on the left hand panel here, there are various functionalities. So let's click on the files. So clicking on the files will reveal the contents of the current working directory. So my first impression is that this looks pretty much like a Jupyter lab. And so here you can see the Jupyter notebook, IPYNB, and you could also see the CSV data file. And so this is the cell allowing us to import the data. So why don't we go ahead and try doing that. So if you click on the code cell, you'll see that you could click on run, or you could also annotate this particular code cell. Like for example, if I click on add comments, I could add some comments here. So it could essentially be a note to self, or it could be a note to other team members. For example, if you would like to make some changes to this. Or replace the CSV file with the solubility data set. Okay, so I'm just making up some reason in the comment. Okay, so you could add comments and if the comment has been resolved, you could also click on resolve as well and then it will be gone. And notice that when you add the comments here in the panel to the left, there is a comment section. And if you click there, you'll have access to all of the comments that you have commented inside this entire notebook. So this also comes in handy. And if you click on a particular note or comment here, it will be taken to the particular notes or comments that you have made in the notebook. So let me write another comment somewhere else. Comment number two, let's just say that. And you, you can be seeing that comment number two appears here. Let's click on the first one. And so this brings us to the first few comments that we have made. And let's click on this one. And it takes us to the comment that we have just made a moment ago. So this is a very nice feature to have when you're coding your data science project. You could also annotate or your other team members could also annotate directly into your notebook. And then you could address these comments at a later time. Okay, let's go back here. Okay, so the second item in the left panel is the environment. So let's click on it. So you're going to see that the hardware is currently in offline mode. So if you want to start it, you could click on the start machine. And then you're going to be seeing that you're using the free cloud resource. And now the notebook is ready. So why don't we go ahead and run the cell. And then you're going to be seeing the output. So you're going to be seeing the green tick here. So this tells us that the cell has successfully been ran. Let's go to the next one. So you see here that they have embedded the YouTube video. All right, so this notebook will just tell us how to run the cell. Okay, 
Let's look at the left panel here again. Integration. So you could have a wide selection of input data that you could import directly into your working directory. So you have access to MongoDB, Postgres, SQL, Amazon S3, and others. And you could also store environmental variables here as well. GitHub. Okay, so you could also commit directly to Git with this feature. And you could link it. So this will prompt you to authorize the linking of your particular project right inside the deepnote.com interface. Okay, the next one. This is the terminal, the command line that I was just mentioning to you. So if you click on it, and then you have access to the command line. Okay, so you have access to the command line. So this is a great feature and you could also install libraries as well. Let me try installing PyCarrot. Okay, so it works out of the box. Let's have a look at the history. Okay, so you can see what you have done so far. Okay, so this is very nice. So you could think of this as kind of like a Jupyter environment on steroids because it allows you to do many of the common tasks that you would normally do on your own local computer. But the great thing about it is that you could do it on the cloud. And I really like the comment section here because it allows you to interact with other members in your data science team. Okay, and so you see that the PyCarrot library has already been installed. And this was the one that I was talking about. You could also configure your Docker as well. Okay, you could put in your contents for the Docker in here, or you could initialize your project with this notebook. For example, if you would like to install Conda or some particular library directly, you could either put it in here or in the Docker file. Okay, and so let me create a new project. And we're going to be importing this tutorial notebook into the new project. So why don't we just download this and put it on the desktop. There you go. So it added the txt to the file name. Let me delete that. And upload. Okay, here. Upload. Upload success. Okay. Oh, okay, here it goes to the notebook. So it's in the files. So this is the working directory. So let me install RD Kit. So click on run or the control enter or command enter if you're on a Mac. So upon running the cell, it initiates the hardware. And now you see that the computer is being booted. Okay, let me close this. So we get the main panel bigger. This is also a great feature. When you're running the cell, you get to see the time that it's taking to run the cell. And you could also click here to turn on a notification whenever your code cell has been finished. All right, now it's finished. Has been successfully installed. Let's download the data set here. Okay, so we'll just use the one from the data professor GitHub then. Okay, so let's rerun this cell. All right, and then you see the output. Okay, so nice histogram in the output here. Okay, so why don't I just run the entire notebook? Run notebook. Okay. All right. So it's now going to run from the top. It's going to run the installation of RD Kit all over again. And you're going to be seeing that the entire notebook is comprised of 59 cells. And so the number here will be reduced as each cell has been completed. And so this is a great way to look at how many cells are remaining. And now the countdown. All right, and now it's all finished. Okay, this is awesome. This is a neat feature. Let's look at the end. All right, let's look at the output. Okay. 
Yeah. So you could also output it as images as well, and it will work. So I think we've briefly seen the structure, right? Let's have a look right here. So we could also output it as the chemical image. Okay, so scroll down. Okay, scroll down. So the entire notebook here ran without an issue. All right. Okay, that's the prediction performance. Let's see if the image is successfully displayed here. Vertical plot, does it work? Yes, it does work. All right. Horizontal plot. Okay, so everything works here. And you could add your code cell, text cell, also SQL and other input as well. And so here you have it, the deepnote.com. So feel free to check this awesome data science Jupyter compatible platform. And let me know in the comments of this section whether DeepNote is worth a try for your data science endeavors. And also leave a note in the comments section whether you like it or which feature you like and how it'll improve your data science journey. And so I look forward to reading all of your comments. And if you're finding value in this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, hit on the notification bell in order to be notified of the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey.